Yeah, man, so purple purple, spin up a blessed beats. Congratulations on your purchase of the Humbox, the best VST plugin in the world. We're gonna go through a couple of instructions in this video. First, how to install it, and then how to use it. Follow along to me. After unzipping the zip file, you should be seeing these here files. If you're on a Macintosh, your installer is in here. If you're on a Windows computer, the installer is in there. If you're on a machina, you have all the different sounds and samples. This is only if you wanna use it for the standalone machine or if you don't want to use it as a plugin or on the machine for some reason. Also take note, there's this samples file right here. We're gonna need that later, so pay attention to that. Let's open up the installer. Here, if it has any objections, run it as administrator. Right click it and same thing on the Mac. Right click and press open if it has any uh, objections as to why you want to open this installer file. Just go through the whole thing. First, VST2, 32 and 64 bit, you can choose your own directory if you want to. VST3 always defaults to the same directory. We're gonna install this. Complete. Now you want to open your favorite digital audio workstation. In my case, I'm gonna open up machine this time around. All right, all right, all right, we have a project. Now let's just, as, as you would open any plugin, click here and you will find the Bless Beats category right about around there, Homebox. Click it. If you don't find it here, maybe you might need to rescan your directory. This is the same thing for any DAW, really. If you've installed it in the correct VST directory, you should find it in here. And if it's not in here, you might need to do a rescan or add the correct location before you do a rescan in there. And then it should pop up. First time you open it, it's going to ask you for this samples folder, right? Now remember what I said in the beginning. There is a specific file that we need to get at right now. Just click install samples, press OK, and then find a directory where you unzipped your Humbox files. And there you have it. This is something you only need to do the first time. Select the location where you want to install them. I already have my Humbox samples folder right there. Now, you're not going to hear anything still the first time because you need to reload the plugin. And this is only the first time that you do this install. Now you should be able to hear the sound. Beauty. Now for some operation manual. You can notice here these 12 articulation key switches. Whenever you press one of these buttons, now we're at the do articulation. We can do ba. Ba. Be. Yeah. You can also access these articulations from the lowest octave of your keyboard. Of course, also some nice pitch mod is a required detail to make the funky productions, you know what I'm saying? So that is it for that. Now, it defaults to mono monophonic legato mode. Yeah. You can set your glide time right over here. Long or short. And notice that it re-triggers if you have it all the way down, it re-triggers the note well. If you have it slightly more up, it's gonna glide to the next note. Very cool. Also, if you want to switch over to polyphonic mode, you can flip this switch over here. No. and pretty self-explanatory with the reverb. This one does have a little special feature though, which I think is rather cool. Actually quite spectacular and amazing. If we flip, flick this on, it only has one setting really. I just tuned it to where I fit. I think it fits nice. Nice. Obviously you can um, put whichever reverb you want on it, but what is nice about this is the freeze function. And if you're on a machine or a complete control like this, uh, you should be able to access all of these parameters from your control surface also. Let us uh, strum a chord here. Yeah. 
Pretty damn amazing. Tremolo. You can automate that timing for some cool special effects. We can turn some bit crusher on. And it really crushes it to some, I don't know, I was thinking about a robot rock talk box when I set up the settings for this one. And we have a chorus as well, so if you want some really, to, to really space it out, you can use a combo of these here effects. And that is it really, I expect from you to have one of the top 10 billboard hits made with this here. I mean, there's no excuse now, you have the tools, just go ahead and make that beautiful music, you know what I'm saying? One known bug that I've not been able to reproduce lately. It can happen when you're in uh, mono mode. And you're doing a lot of these slides. You record a pattern and there's a lot of these... Um, let's, let's record something, I'll just show you. Okay, so and then they happen to be overlapping somewhere, maybe stretching out like that, looping around. I, this happened happened in Ableton Live for me. It can happen that when you do these slides, it's not playing the correct note and it just keeps going up and up and up. Uh, this happened like twice and I don't know what triggers it, but if that happens, all you need to do is really reload the project and it's back to normal. Also to explain a little bit the thought behind the play style with this, of course, you have your key switches down on the very bottom. So if you're playing live, you can do switches like that. You can take one of these um, notes and freeze it and hop over to another one and start playing over it. But really, it's not really meant to do slides that are glides that are from several os uh, octaves. You can do it for cool effect. For example, it sounds very good when you slide it from... Um, semitone next to it, but if you go like that, two octaves up, it's going to repitch. It actually repitches the same sample that you started on. And I opted not to slide between the samples because for different reasons, it has to do with the mechanism of sw switching this and also because um, it sounds, usually you don't do these long slides. If you want to do the longer slide, you can use the the mod, the pitch mod wheel for that. Also, I thought it was nice to keep it because you can't do that on purpose when you're starting off on a big note like this. I mean, a high note and then switching down like that uh, on purpose and and really repitching the sample dramatically. So, a tip for general funky playstyle: if you're in uh, the mono legato mode, sliding from uh, one or two semitones down on every note always great for. <laughs> Also trying to get that play style down to where you're not always consistently holding the next note down, but knowing when to give it a short break and press the next one is going to make it sound a lot better. See, it sounds uh, different if I do from from re-triggering it, letting go briefly and then re-triggering it. Small detail like that, if you're uh, playing with it a lot, it's a recommendation to get the, the most cool sound from it. Of course, you can also keep one note going and keep re-pitching it. Also has a cool effect. All right, that is it for it. I hope you love this plugin as much as I do. And if you bought it, thank you humongously for your support shout out to all my patrons all the purples in the in the black hole in the discord okay bye bye